For the second year in a row, the Saints are a team that's functioning with zero offense in a league that's built on offense. It's time for Pete Carmichael to go, but he's not the only one under pressure. We'll talk about why Dennis, Dennis Allen and Derek Carr, the time is now to get things going, or maybe it never will in New Orleans. You're listening to the Straight Up Saints Podcast. What is up, Huda Nation? Welcome back inside another edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast. I'm your host, Chris Vogel, and as always, we're brought to you by Scott Fickner, injury lawyers. If you've been injured in any kind of accident, car, truck, 18-wheeler, or hurt offshore, Scott Fickner handles it all. You give him a call at 504-500-1111 for a free consultation. They'll always fight for the win. So it's Monday morning, October 2nd, and the Saints are still employing Pete Carmichael. Will that change by the end of the day? Maybe. It's certainly possible. Do I expect it to? Probably not. But let's get into the harsh reality of what this situation has become. There's no room for Pete Carmichael in New Orleans anymore. This is the second straight year of an offense that just looks like it's playing a completely different era as opposed to the rest of the NFL. I sat there last night watching Chiefs Jets, right? And everyone's talking about how much of a joke the Jets are without Aaron Rodgers, especially offensively, and Zach Wilson looking terrible. Zach Wilson looked great yesterday. The Jets' offense looked great yesterday. How come the Jets can move the ball with no problems? How come the Bears can move the ball with no problems, but the Saints can't do it? I put up, I put up this stat yesterday on Twitter, and I, I, you know, I put a meme because I was trying to make a, a little bit of a joke about it, but it's the truth of the matter. There was a situation yesterday that unfolded that should have Saints – the Saints offense just utterly embarrassed. Through the first four games, the Saints offense has four touchdowns. Justin Fields had four touchdowns yesterday. Christian McCaffrey had four touchdowns yesterday. Josh Allen had five touchdowns yesterday. There are teams putting up, or individual players, excuse me, putting up the same amount of touchdowns or more in a single game than the Saints offense has put up through four. It's an embarrassment of a unit. 16 points against the Titans, 17 against the Packers, 9 against the Bucks. I mean, they didn't even get in the end zone yesterday. And it's not going to change as long as they run this offense. And let me explain why, and I know I don't need to explain it to you because I promise you if you're listening to me right now, you're usually in agreement with me that Pete Carmichael's got to get the hell out of New Orleans. There's no more excuses. So last year, the offense was terrible. Saints decided to run it back. So what they do? They spent a lot of money on the quarterback position. So in their mind, they upgraded the quarterback position. In their mind, they have a healthy Michael Thomas, which they do. I think Mike's looked pretty good when given the opportunity. And then on top of it, you have a really nice trio of wide receivers in Rashid Shahid, in Chris Olave. Obviously, Mike, as I mentioned, but Olave and Shahid are taking that next step. Then you have a running back in Alvin Kamara, who is healthy, looked great yesterday. And a tight end room that we all talked about was supposed to be good. But let's go down and let's look at the facts. The tight end room hasn't been used this year. That's on coaching. The running back usage, just not very good. Quarterback hasn't looked good. And then Olave and Shahid, they can't find ways to consistently get him involved on offense. That's embarrassing. Embarrassing because when Olave and Shahid get their opportunities, both of them are phenomenal. I really think these two are going to be bright players in New Orleans for a long time to come, not just this season, a long time to come. But there's moments in the game where we're looking around and going, why the hell is Olave not of a target yet? Why is Shahid not being utilized in a, in a variety of different ways? That's just silly. That's just silly. There are too many times this year where it's the second or third quarter, Olave doesn't have a target yet. The coaching has to be better, but I don't think it can with this coaching. And I think now you have to make a decision. Do you want to let Pete just sink the season? Or is Dennis Allen going to say, you know what? Ron Curry deserves a chance and give it a go or not saying I advocate for this. He brings in Gruden and says, okay, you figure it out, but stop running the same thing back. We've seen enough. We've seen enough. The saints are not a good team with this Pete Carmichael, Dennis Allen duo. It's terrible. It doesn't work. So is it time to fire him? The answer is yes. The real question is, will they fire him? I wish I had an answer for you guys. Cause I don't know. I don't think Dennis Allen has the stomach to do what is necessary during moments like this. But that brings me to my next point. Dennis Allen, Derek Carr, who's under more pressure? I think you know the answer. The answer is Dennis Allen, and I'll get to that in just a second. But I want to make it very clear. Derek Carr is under a lot of pressure. 
And I know the first thing is going to be, well, Chris, his offensive play caller is terrible, so we can't really blame him that much. And I'm okay with people saying that, but let me tell you why he is under pressure. Dennis, Dennis Allen got his quarterback in Derek Carr, four-year, 160. They did that. If you really look at the deal, it's really the first two years that you're on the hook for. I don't see, you know, at this rate, Derek getting through the four-year contract, especially if he continues to struggle like this. He'll be cut long before that. But I look around the league, and I see other quarterbacks kind of in the same, I'd say, stratosphere as Derek Carr, where they're not considered elite, but they've had their moments. And the first guy I thought of was Jared Goff. And why am I thinking of Jared Goff? Jared Goff was on the Rams. We know an illegitimate Super Bowl appearance, whatever it may be. But the Rams were a really good team. And they decided, you know what? He's just not good enough for us. And we're going to trade him. We're going to get Matthew Stafford. Obviously, that worked out for them. They won a Super Bowl. But they traded Goff. And he goes from a Super Bowl contender, living in Los Angeles, to Detroit, where in his first year, he went 3-10-1 and as a starter. And he didn't mope around. And he didn't bitch and moan. And he didn't sit there complaining nonstop. The next year, he just got to work, and he had a great season. They won nine games, and they started building something. And now this year, they're 3-1. and Goff looks good again. And the reason I bring up Jared Goff is Goff has shown me he can reinvent himself in a different scenario, in a different place. It's time for Derek Carr to do the same. And I'm saying this as someone who thinks Derek Carr is a solid quarterback. Right now, the Saints aren't getting solid from him. They're getting shit from him. And again, I know that Pete plays a big factor in it, I don't expect Derek Carr to overcome entirely bad coaching. I'm not saying that. But I have seen Derek Carr with bad coaching in Vegas look pretty decent. So he's got to find a way to overcome certain things in New Orleans right now. Because what he's doing is inexcusable. Missing on deep throws. Being checked down commander for for way too long of the game. Not making plays off script. The The Saints paid a lot of money. So, yes... Dennis Allen's under more pressure than Derek Carr. I don't even think it's a question that needs to be fully expand, but I wanted to put this out there because I think Derek has to figure it the hell out. Because if Derek doesn't, and this season continues, and we finish the year and Derek Carr has a career low in touchdowns, you know, passing yards career low, completion percentage career low, he's going to go into next year, and that is going to be the determining factor for how long he's going to stay in New Orleans. Because if it, is, if it is Dennis Allen for one more year, which if it is, please, God help me. And if it's not and it's a new coach, they're not going to give him a long leash. They're going to say you have X amount of games to show us that you deserve to start. And if you can't do that, sorry, you got to get the hell out of here. That's just the truth of the matter. So Derek is under pressure, and that pressure starts on Sunday against the Patriots, which, by the way, have a really great defense. I know they're going to lose Matthew Judon for a little bit, and that's going to hurt, but they have a good defense. So I just want to get it out there that Derek's got to be better. He's got to be better. And that's also not me saying that that he is to blame for everything because he's not. Pete is getting, in my opinion, at least 50% of the blame for why this team stinks. Uh, another percent goes to Derek. Another percent goes to Dennis Allen. Another percent goes to, man, some of these players are a bit overrated, but Derek's got to be better. As for Dennis Allen, what is there left to be said? I, I don't know. I spent about six weeks of last season complaining about he should be fired, and I want him fired. And the Saints decided to run it back, and they're running it back, and I keep looking at this man's you know, overall record. He's in year five of being a head coach. He's 17 and 40. 17 and 40. There's no fixing that. He is who he is. He continues to show you who he is, and the Saints just continue to let him do it. And it's very frustrating. Dennis Allen's probably a good man. I know he's a very good defensive play caller. But 17 and 40, Steve Wilkes got canned after one year. Steve Wilkes had a a better record as an interim coach. Panthers said, no, it's good. We don't need you. And I'm not advocating for Steve Wilkes. I'm saying coaches who have done better than Dennis Allen have been fired. Brian Flores had two uh, back-to-back seasons where he went over 500. Dennis Allen's never gone over 500 in his career. And Brian Flores got canned. Now Miami made the right decision. Mike McDaniel's a better coach. But coaches around the league have won more games than Dennis Allen and been fired before. Dennis Allen is 17 and 40, 23 games under 500. And there's no sign of him getting fired. There's never any pressure. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And and I lied. I I thought that there was going to be some urgency from him this year. Stupid of me to think so. He, He just continues to walk around the sidelines with not a lot of urgency. And it's very frustrating. And I don't know when it's going to change. And I'll tell you what, as we get into these next five games, 
A lot of people are going to talk about how they're winnable and this and that. Here's the harsh reality about the next five games. The Saints are going to play teams, for the most part, that have a direction, and they have none. So let's start with the five. The first one is playing yourself, honestly. You play the Patriots on Sunday. Why do I say it's playing yourself? I think the Saints and the Patriots are two teams in the NFL right now that are unwilling to move on from the past. The Patriots, it's pretty clear, man. Belichick's not that dude anymore, and Tom Brady's not walking through that door to save you. So you have a horrible offense with not a lot of good skilled players and a good defense, but that's not getting you much in today's NFL. And they're one and three right now, and they haven't looked the same since Tom left. And it's time for them to move on and say, you know what? The, the Brady and Belichick era was amazing, but we can't do this anymore. Saints deciding to just cling on to whatever's left of the Sean Payton era. The next game against the Texans, man, wouldn't you kill to be a Texans fan right now? Young, really, really exciting head coach in D'Amico Ryans. C.J. Stroud on a tear. He looks like he could be your offensive rookie of the year. So you might have your coach quarterback combo for the next God knows how many years. That's exciting. After the Texans game, you have the Jags. Made the playoffs last year, AFC Divisional Round. Quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, really exciting. Coach in Doug Peterson has proven it before. And by the way, Doug Peterson won a Super Bowl. And the Eagles, after a little bit where the things got stale and they were stalling, they said, you know what? Let's get him out of town. And he won a Super Bowl. So, yes, Jags, that's a bright team. Colts, 2-2. Two and two. Anthony Richardson's had really good moments. Shane Steichen's looked pretty good as a coach. That, that's an exciting team. So that's three in a row of teams with bright futures. And then it's the Bears, and the Bears fucking suck. I get that. But you know what the Bears know what they do? They know that they're tanking. So the Bears will be in a position to be picking one of these talented quarterbacks next year, where, whether it's Caleb, whether it's Drake May. So at least in some regards, that's a direction. It might be backwards, but it's a direction. The Saints are going to play themselves in terms of the Patriots. Three teams that have bright futures with exciting coaches and exciting quarterbacks. And then a Bears team that they probably want to lose that Saints game because it's all about getting Caleb Williams. And then you have New Orleans where they're kind of stuck in neutral. And they're not just stuck in neutral. They're stuck in neutral on a hill. You know that car is going to start rocking back eventually. They just refuse to let it go completely. And it's very frustrating. Very frustrating. So I'm going to get into what you guys have to say in just a minute. We'll get into the Q&A uh, portion of this show. But before I do that, just want to get in a quick word from one of our sponsors. DraftKings Sportsbook. Can you believe we've had seven months without an NFL game? Crazy, right? Well, good thing that's over. NFL's here in DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. Download now and use code BOOT to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting 5 bucks. That's code BOOT. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Once again, thank you to DraftKings Sportsbook being part of the program. So let's get into what you guys have to say this Monday morning. I want to start off with Super Chat from Carl Markey. Marks, thank you so much for uh, helping the program out here. He said, fire Pete, fire DA, fire Loomis, clean house. The old guard is holding us back from evolving. I'm scared Gail is too checked out to make a change. Ownership needs to get hit in the wallet to wake up. Whew. It, you know, I, I don't think you're wrong with anything you said. I think that's my biggest fear right now, though, right? It's like they might get rid of one person, but I don't know if that's solving the whole thing. I just think that the Saints are stuck in that old era. And to your point, until you're willing to make changes, I just don't know. There needs to be a culture shift. There needs to be. And you're seeing it around the league. Teams are having less patience because they know what – good football should look like in today's NFL. Like, like I said, the dolphins went like 10 and seven with Brian Flores. And they're like, man, we can't do this. We got to, we got to move on and figure it out. And they brought in McDaniel and yeah, I know they got, you know, destroyed yesterday by the bills, but the dolphins are on the right track. You know, I look at a team, I'll go back to the Niners in, I think the 2015, 2016 era. So the Niners had uh, Jim Tom Sula. He was terrible. They fired him. Then they bring him Chip, uh, Chip Kelly. After one year, terrible, fire him. Because they realize that's not good coaching. And you go through it, you figure it out, and you have Shanahan now, and the Niners have been rolling with him ever since. So I think there are teams out there that understand you can't be too patient in the, in the NFL. The Saints, meanwhile, to your point, are just continuing 
to let the Sean Payton descendants run the show, but Sean Payton's not here anymore, and you're not getting success from this group anyway. It's very, very frustrating, and I don't know when it's going to change. I don't. And to Loomis's thing, Loomis still drafts well, but I don't know if that's also a Jeff Ireland thing. I don't know if that's also a Kai, uh, Kai Harley thing, but I think the Saints got guys in the front office. They could move on from the old regime, promote some dudes, and have a different coaching search, but I don't trust them to. And that's my other thing. If they fire Dennis Allen, right? Let's say the year's over, they get rid of Dennis Allen. I could see them just looking into guys that Sean Payton spoke to because, you know, they they hold him in such high regard that what he says is, is the gospel to them. So it's just very frustrating. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I just don't know if they'll change. I, I really just don't know. Alex says, didn't think it was possible, but I feel worse about Carr's performance yesterday given that even Zach Wilson outplayed him. And then added, Ben Johnson has revitalized Jared Koff's career. A Sam Howell-led offense put up over 30 on the Eagles. Hard not to believe Carr would get better under either of those schemes. Well, to your point, so yes, Zach Wilson looked better yesterday than any game Derek Carr's had in a Saints uniform, which makes you want to throw up. But the second part of it, you talk about Washington and Sam Howell looking good. Yeah, because Washington decided, you know what? Let's not waste Eric Bieniemy's time. We brought him in the building. Let's actually speak to him, see what he's got to do. And I got to give Eric Bieniemy credit, right? There's some people that don't like him, and I know that he still hasn't been a head coach yet. But Eric Bieniemy has that Sam Howell looking offense rolling, you know? And the Saints right now, you talk about Washington, they put up 31 yesterday. Saints cannot put 31 up in two games. So far through two games, they've put up 26. So it's they're just playing a different game right now. Jerry says fire Pete now, and then New Daylight present Austin uh, and also Nicole saying hashtag fire Carmichael or hashtag fire Pete. Cody says, are we sure Carmichael isn't trying to get fired? Maybe he is, and they're just not catching on. And for him, he might be frustrated that he has to keep coming back week after week when he doesn't want to be there. But, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty frustrating right now. Margaret says, do you think Breeze, uh, when Breeze came out and said that he played through his injury, that Carr felt that he, need, he had to do it, it was clear a lot of throws were high? No, I don't think so. I think Derek Carr, over the course of his career, has been that type of guy where if he can play through the injury, he's going to do it. I don't think Drew Breeze's comments had to do with anything. I think that Derek was always thinking if I could play Sunday, I could play Sunday, but it just didn't happen. And by the way, because I'm going to go watch this game back later, which God help me, this is going to be really frustrating to do. The Saints were not utilizing the middle of the field yesterday. They don't have any routes going over the middle of the field yesterday, which is gross negligence when you have one of the best to ever do it when it comes to dominating the middle of the field than Michael Thomas, which also would help out your quarterback, give him an easy outlet in front of him when he's not feeling 100%. But you know, Pete doesn't know what the fuck he's doing out there. So that's what happens. Jerry says, Saints fans booing at the Dome is a sign of why this team sucks. Should have booed louder, in my opinion. Nicole says, we can't even score over 20 points. DA either needs to help it needs to help offensively or Pete and him have to go. I prefer the latter. I would prefer both of them go. But I understand the Saints don't have the balls to do that at the moment. So I think what's going to happen, hopefully, is they're just going to keep the staff the way it is. And they're going to go... Well, for this week, we're going to try let Coach Curry run the plays or call the plays. That's what they're going to do. I don't even know if they have the guts to fire Pete. I'm hope, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't know. I really don't. Michael saying the man's got to go. Don't disagree there. Alex says another six or seven win season incoming football purgatory. Not bad enough for a top five pick. Not good enough for a playoff spot. God forbid the Saints have a good offense and defense at the same time. Yep. It, it Again, stuck in neutral right now. If you If they win seven games again, you're picking like 14th, 15th. You didn't have a good season anyway. And all right, that's not helping the new regime that's got to come in. Michael says they didn't sleep at all last night. I slept like a baby, but that's just me. I told you, I'm not going to let them, I'm not going to let the Saints not knowing how to score fuck up my, my schedule anymore. I can't take it. Jerry says all the talent we got, but no coaching. Austin adds way too much talent to not be scoring TDs. Margaret says, I think Camaro thinks the same way Pete needs to go. Oh, Camaro definitely thinks it. He said it without saying it. Like, conversations need to be had because there's too much talent for them to sit there scoring nine points. Nine points in an NFL game? That's embarrassing. D says they're just trotting out there and running plays. They might as well sit the tight ends. Unreal, man. All offseason talk about how good this tight end room is, and, and rightfully so, and they haven't used them. Nicole says Ronald Curry deserves Pete Carmichael's job. Pete was barely around the offense yesterday, but Curry was stuck to D.C. in the offense like glue. I was there. saw it my own eyes. I don't disagree, and I think – he should be the one calling plays right now. At the very least, you've got to see if there's something there. And Coach Curry's a guy that people around the league hold in high regard. A lot of people respect his opinion. 
Let's see. Maybe he could run the show. But you know Pete can't. So why not try something else? Like, that's the frustrating part. We've now had a sample size of 20 games, 21 games, excuse me, where Pete's running the show with Champagne not there. And it's not good. Alex says Olave should have no less than six to eight catches a game. Embarrassing. He only had one catch yesterday. He should have had four in his sleep. Cody says, how many times will the Saints run a jet sweep before they realize they don't have a clue how to block it? <laughs> I don't know. Probably at least like 10 more times. Alex says the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting results. And that exactly is where the Saints are. Tara says, good morning. Pete Carmichael's the problem. No doubt about it. Also says, Deuce Windham broke it down and Pete Carmichael's terrible. He is. And, and Deuce does great film reviews. So I strongly suggest if you haven't, go check out his work. Deuce is one of the best in the business out of it. And he will, he will make you probably a little bit more frustrated about this offense. Wesley says Carr was not blameless yesterday, but I feel as though the play calling did him no favors. It's doing him no favors. I agree. Trust me. Alex says if they bring in a new coach, it's not too far-fetched to believe that, that the coach will want to bring in his own guy via draft, trade, free agent over Carr. Well, I think if they bring in a new coach, they're going to rock with Carr for one year and then figure it out because Carr is not a bad option to rock with. Think of what Detroit did with Jared Goff. I, I, I think that's the route that they would go. That's just my opinion. Obviously, things could change, but that would be the route. Nathan says the 2009 offensive scheme isn't worth it in 2023. Look at Denver. If they didn't get lucky playing the, the Bears, they would be winless. You are not wrong. And I agree. Denver's struggling too, and you see it. Like, it's a little outdated now. Red Joseph says Jared Goff looking solid this year, and the Lions games are good entertainment. Yeah, Lions are fun to watch. No doubt about it. Tara says they're calling every throw from the outside instead of attacking the middle. Totally agree with you. Marvin says car unveiled equals Jameis Winston 2.0. So far, man, it's been the same thing. It's like the, the James Franco thing with like same but different, but still the same. Like that's that's what this offense is right now. New Daylight Presents says, Chris, I'm the only one who put the pictures of Carmichael in clown mode on Twitter. I hope you saw them. Okay, so I did see that everybody replies, but I saw it like late at night. So I wasn't like, my eyes are like half closed. So I, I was laughing when I saw it though. I appreciate you. Tara says Carmichael should be fired now. Alex says we're we're the game now that the opposing teams have circled as a win. Colts and Texans both have rookie quarterbacks playing much better than Carr. I saw that on Twitter yesterday. Texans fans were looking at their schedule, and the next couple of games were like Falcons, Saints, Panthers. Like, holy shit, we might win five in a row. And I'm like, God damn, like the, the you've reached the point where the Texans are looking at the Saints on the schedule. Like, oh, that's food. That's an easy W. And I can't blame them right now with the way the two teams are playing. Wesley says the story of next week being the coaching battle between Belichick's defense and Pete Carmichael is going to give me nightmares. Pete needs to relinquish play call duties. They got to just force it out of him. Don't make him relinquish it. Just force it out of him. Terrace says not on, all on Carr. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I agree. I, I'm just saying like Carr was terrible though. And that's okay to say. Not It doesn't mean it's all his fault, but he was terrible. Margaret says, I don't think Lattimore was great yesterday against Evans either. No, Lattimore was bad. That's the worst I've seen him look against, uh, against Mike Evans. No doubt about it. Marvin says, start Winston and lose every game and get a top three pick in the draft. Hate to tell you, they're not getting the top three pick in the draft. First off, they're two ahead of the curve right now at two and two. You got the Bears old, owning the first and second pick because they got their own pick at 0 and 4 and the Panthers pick at 0 and 4. Joshua says, Dennis Allen's a loser, straight up and down loser. He's not a winner. Never has been over 500. Now, I agree. You are what your record says you are. And his record says that he's 23 games under 500. Red Joseph says, I'm annoyed that last year the national media figured, figures worked overtime to justify DA's hiring. So it goes. That's the industry. Yeah, and now the national media is right that he's an absolute joke. So Alan says, DA needs to address the problem now. Pete ain't doing his job. Changes need to come. We'll see. He, but he isn't doing his job. And to Justin's point, to keep doing what you're doing thing, that's the problem. The Saints have like established this kind of loser mentality where it's okay to keep this continuity thing rolling. But it's not working at all. And we all know it's not working. Alex says, Doug Peterson, yet another guy they brought in for an interview and didn't hire who's having success elsewhere. And to Nicole's point, add on, they had Eric Bieniemy in the building for eight fucking hours, eight hours. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, I, the whole process just didn't sit right with me. They knew that they wanted DA, but they brought in a bunch of coaches anyway just to go back to DA anyway. And you made the wrong decision because Dennis Allen's not a head coach. But they're going to go through 13 more games to get the answer that they got last year. And they didn't even need to answer last year. They could have just looked at his tenure in Oakland and they would have got the answer. Tara says, Pete Carmichael is putting Carr in a bad place 85% of the time. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm not. Paul says, what the hell is Dennis Allen's problem? He can see that the team's offense is the problem. They won't address it. They should have fired Pete Carmichael last year. 
and David Carr is washed up. Well, it's Derek, not David. David is already officially done washed up. Uh, and Derek does look pretty bad right now. I, I can't lie about that. Joshua says, until we stop supporting the product, there's no reason for Gail to make a change. Point blank. She's making money hand over fist and feels pressure, feels zero pressure from the fan base. Yeah, it's kind of the situation for a lot of teams. I think of like, so Knicks fans will complain about their owner and it's like, well, you're selling out Madison Square Garden. He's he's not going anywhere. He's not making any changes. So I, I think for the Saints, as long as the fans are still going, as long as we're still emotionally invested, and it's hard to blame it on us, right? It shouldn't be on the fans to be like, oh, I'm emotionally detaching myself or I'm not re- I'm not supporting them the rest of the season to get a point across. Like, if there's something wrong with your, your product, you should fix it. You shouldn't let it sit there smelling like shit on the curb and not get rid of it. But that's what the Saints are doing right now. Keeping it real, who that sports podcast says play calling without a doubt is a major problem, but not enough accountability is being directed at the men who continually fa- fail to execute. Despite the call, still must do your job. Yeah, I understand. I Look, I think a lot of it is the play calling, but execution has been terrible too, and I understand that. I think players on this team, a lot of the big-name guys can and should be playing better, and they're not right now, and that's a big problem, no doubt about it. One crazy who that says in the fourth, Saints are down by eight, and uh, was taking Kamara and the Bucks are on the sideline after getting after a play hugging. Forgot that nonsense. Get back in the huddle and get ready to make a play. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of urgency right now. I just don't. Nicole says promote Kai Harley. Kai's been great. New Daylight presents us the harsh realities. The next five games don't matter if we still have the same coaching staff because the season will be the same. We need them out of town ASAP, or all that player talent is a bust. Well, I'll tell you the truth, guys. This season. No matter what happens in the next 13 games, it do, it will not change who Dennis Allen is. If they win some games, it's because their defense will probably play at an elite level, or maybe Derek Carr will finally have some good games. But they are who they are, and they're stuck in this spot right now. They're not going to change. They're not. Dennis Allen is who Dennis Allen is. Pete Carmichael is who Pete Carmichael is. And we just got to hope as fans, at the end of the year, they're not back. Because nothing's going to change. That's the, that's the harsh reality. If you want the truth, in my mind, this is who the Saints are now. This is who they are. A really, really talented football team that has a god-awful coaching staff. And hopefully that talent overcomes the coaching staff more days than not so they can win enough games. But if they don't, you're looking at another losing record. Wesley says, would you be okay with Mickey moving up and taking a step back to, to some made-up presidential role and Kai or Jeff taking over GM role? Absolutely. I actually think that's what should happen. And no knock on Loomis because I think Loomis can still do his job. So if Loomis stays, it is what it is. But I, I think that the Saints had a lot of talent in the front office, hence why they continue to have good rosters. And I, I think that some of that talent could eventually be rewarded, you know? Uh, and I think hopefully it happens. Audwin says, Dennis, Pete, Carr, bye. Who that nation welcomes you, John Cruden. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know if that happened. Carl Markey Mark says, the sad reality is that they turn it around. We'll just get bounced first round in the playoffs. Then we'll be right back where we started. That's how Hazlitt got uh, stuck around for six years. I agree. That's why it almost feels like it's a lose-lose situation. Because if you do make the playoffs, all right, Pete's probably back. And Dennis Allen's probably definitely back. And if you don't, okay, now maybe we could get towards fixing things. But it's such a tough situation because for the players, you don't want to see them wasting all this talent. But then at the same time, I can't take this coaching staff any longer. I can't. And I, I was talking with people about it last night. I was like, I cannot take 13 more weeks of watching this this coaching staff. I can't. I'll do it because it's my job, but I don't want to do it. I don't. They're, they're bad right now. The other Mike says Pete will probably be just assigned to game planning. I don't know, man. I don't know. Assign him to, like, getting post-game snacks or something, not calling plays. I, it, he's just not worth a damn at this point. The other Mike says Curry should call plays. Didn't he call during the preseason? He did. They gave him a chance during the preseason. They absolutely did. Trap 504 says, if we don't make the playoffs, should everyone be fired? Yeah, pretty much. Everyone on the coaching staff should be fired. I think the front office, like I said, has a lot of talent. The, the coaching staff, though, yes. Keeping it real, who that sports podcast says it's time to pass the play calling duties to Ronald Curry and let him put his version on offense. You can bring in a new coordinator in season. You can bring in a new coordinator in season. Let's see if can show, uh, Curry can show why uh, NFL executives, I guess you're going to say like him, why NFL executives hold him in high regard. It's Curry time. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree. And I think that's what's going to happen. I just don't know if it's going to happen this week or sooner or later, but it's got to happen. Curry's got to get a chance here. Troy says Jim Moore took more accountability than DA. The, we got our butts whipped in the second half quote. <laughs> yeah. DA just has the worst response for everything, man. 
like I said, he's probably a really nice guy, but substitute teacher vibes nonstop. Ooh, Patrick Mahomes account over here. Never heard Saints crowd boo on their offense like that. This is unbelievable. Pissed beyond belief. I'm a Saints fan, even though I have a Mahomes. I have Mahomes on my pick, by the way. Yeah, it is. It is pretty unbelievable. No doubt about it. Tara says Lions are running things. They are. No doubt. They, they, no doubt about it. And that's a team that changed the culture. Changed the culture for sure. Just call me. Trey says if Bummy Pete actually gets released this season, who would be your top three choices for a new OC to bring in right now? Well, I think it's just two. I think it's either you bring in Gruden because you had him around the team, or what I would do would just promote Curry, let Curry call the offensive plays, and let's see if they look a bit different. Let's see. Trav says after last season, I stopped, I stopped letting the Saints losses ruin my days. It's just funny entertainment to me now. Fair enough. King BB Gaming Short says third and three, let's run four verts. That's all he knows, man. Third and short, this man's calling a goddamn shot play for no reason. It's, it's ridiculous. Cody says, are we going to talk about how Sean went 5-2 and two with Winston at quarterback? Sean went 5-2 and two with Winston at quarterback. Sean went 5-0 and oh with Bridgewater. Sean won games with Taysom. Sean knows what the hell he's doing. Pete don't know what he's doing, and obviously DA doesn't know what he's doing. Austin says, defense can only stop the other team so many times when you're on the field three-fourths of the game, you're going to get tired and start giving up points. For sure, but defensive line, in terms of pass rush, is a problem. If Dalton, Winston, and Carr all play terrible, it's the coaching. That's what I was saying yesterday. If you start changing things and the same, there's one variable but variable that stays the same, and it's the coaching, then I think we got our answer. Justin, to get me cash, says, watching the Saints offense is like a kick in the nuts. Kind of is. I agree with you. Greg says, I felt awful after a loss yesterday. Then the Steelers said, hold my beer. But seriously, left which will be available in January. I think he'd make a great coach. Possibly. Possibly. I know what I want. I want Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson's the guy that I want. I, that's the guy who I think in one year can turn the Saints around. I just don't know if the Saints would get him. And I don't know if he'd want to go to the Saints because I think he's going to have his pick. Jerry says, watching the Saints offense is like looking at a brick wall. I agree, but sometimes brick walls are nice to look at. You know, if it's got nice texture and shit, the Saints team, nothing nice right now. Audwin says, today is the day to roll the dice. Let's not wait until next year. Oh, they're going to wait. I'll tell you that much. Justin says, I believe the team is fed up with all the coaches. It's going to get there. That's the thing. Dennis Allen was able to keep the locker room together last year despite them being terrible. He will not be able to do it again. Mark my words. If this continues, the locker room will crumble because you can't keep losing like this. Trav says, Dennis Allen needs to stop cleaning and take the trash out. Your team stank. That's for sure. Josh says, what are the chances we land, land Lane Kiffin? I, I want to make it very clear. I do not want Lane Kiffin in New Orleans. Lane Kiffin... Really fun college coach. Do not want him in New Orleans. One former Oakland Raiders head coach is more than enough. Tara says, where are the, where are the wheel routes for Kamara? No screens. Where's Kamara in space? The things that brought identity are not there. I agree. I was saying yesterday, like, all you're doing is just dumping it off checkdowns to him. Where are the option routes? Where are the angle routes? Where are the wheel routes? Where, where are anything that gets Kamara out in space and let him do his thing? Snakebite says, as TJ Jones from uh, State of the Saints says, would put uh, would say put P. Carmichael back on Juicy Fruit duty and leave him out of play calling. That's pretty funny. Nathan says, we let the enemy walk out of the building. I'm still not happy about that. Paul says, the team has regressed from last year, and they had way better talent than they had last year. I agree. It's the same shit. Like I said, same shit. You put some nice nicer pieces together, and yet you're still not getting the results, which means who does it fall on? It falls on the coaching, obviously. Keeping it real, who that sports podcast is. Guys, I understand the frustration and anger about the lack of offensive success and defensive failures the last two weeks. Well, believe it or not, it could be worse, like 0-4. Yeah, but at least if it was 0-4, I think we'd finally get our answer in terms of like Dennis Allen's going to get fired. If they hover around kind of that 500 line, he might sneak in one more year. And I promise you, if he sneaks in one more year, that's going to be the worst thing for this team. Tara says they're fed up now. And Sky says that locker room's down together. It's together for a little bit longer. It's not going to last much longer, though. I'm telling you from now, if they continue this way. Audwin says, Mrs. Benson, you still have time to make the announcement on WWL uh, 12 New News. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not happening, but I appreciate, uh, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Raphael says, fire this bum. I mean, which one, unfortunately? You know, there's too many. Too many right now. Cody says, watching this offense is as sad as watching LSU's defense Saturday night. The state of Louisiana football, right? LSU right now, all offense, no defense. Saints, all defense, no offense. Pretty, pretty frustrating. Keeping it real, Who that Sports Podcast says you cannot make major changes like bringing in a new offensive coordinator in the middle of the season. 
makes no sense. That's why you promote within. I agree. And that's why it's got to be Coach Curry. But uh, anyway, guys, I'll get back to any more comments you guys have as we get to the close of this show. But before we do that, just want to get to one more word from one of our sponsors, Crystal. I need to clear something up about New Orleans. While our culinary scene might be on fire, our food has never been about heat. It's always been about flavor. And this is how New Orleans does flavor. Are we clear? Crystal, how New Orleans does flavor. Once again, thank you to Crystal for being part of the show. Going to get into any more comments you guys have before we wrap it up on this Monday, uh, which I don't know about you guys. I'm enjoying myself the rest of this Monday. I know that the Saints lost, but I'm not going to let them ruin the vibes here. Let's, let's just see what you guys would say as we close out here. Tara says the atmosphere is so thick you can cut it with a butter knife. It is, man. It's getting really, really tense. It's getting really, really tense. And I'm just saying they play the Patriots next week. The Patriots lost 38 to three on Sunday. They lose to the Patriots. Woof, woof. Josh says we need a new offensive voice in the building desperately. I agree. Caribbean Cool says demote Pete, dem, uh, promote Curry to offensive coordinator, make Gruden the quarterback coach. Maybe they'll do that. Maybe that's what they'll do. Keeping it real says we have Tulane family, the best team in the state of Louisiana and the city of New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, at least there's like consistency there. Like you'll get some good offense and good defense. Um, you know, obviously I know they have that one loss this year, but to be fair, it was against Ole Miss. And I think Pratt missed that game, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I guess we do have Tulane football, but God. When the Saints are bad, it just puts a damper on everything. Connor with the shift says, if you demote Pete, you might as well fire him. Well, that's my problem, right? I don't even think they have the balls to fire Pete Carmichael. I think they're going to be like, you know what, Pete? You had a great run. How about you just take a step back this week? Just say, bro, you fucking suck at your job and just let him go. Like, the Saints run things too close. Too close. They don't want to step on each other's toes. They don't want to hurt feelings. But it's a cold business sometimes. You got to hurt some people's feelings to get to where you need to go. And unfortunately, they just don't have the guts to do it. Snakebite says, Pete Carmichael would struggle calling plays against LSU's defense. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Jerry says, let's put this loss from Sunday behind us. We're in October. Let's make the best of it. We'll see. This October schedule could break this team. I don't know if it could make them, but I know it could break them. Carl Marky Mark says, the thing I'm worried about with Curry calling plays is that if he's stuck with Pete's awful scheming, he'd be set up to fail. Writing and teaching a new playbook isn't really an option mid- mid-year. It's not. It's not, I think your best bet though is Curry seeing that scheme and seeing, okay, how can I put my twist on it? The problem though is like, you know, actually it's not a problem. I was gonna say the problem is if Curry struggles, maybe that whole, that hurts him around the league, but how's he going to get help from being a part of this staff right now anyway with the way they're going? So who knows? Cody says, let's trade DA to Denver for a 20, 30, seventh round pick. <laughs> That's funny. Keeping it real, who that sports pocket says, go support the Green Wave family, competent coaching, and players giving a damn. Nah, man, Tulane's doing their thing. Been doing their thing, too. Nah, I, I absolutely respect it. Uh, we got a comment from Raphael saying, where is John? I guess John Gruden's what you're going for. I don't know. He's probably practicing spider 2 wide bananas somewhere. So uh, that, that's what he's probably doing. Robert Johnny says we're we're running an off-brand Sean Payton playbook without the creativity. We need an entirely new approach, no salvaging what we have. Yeah, that's for damn sure. And then Connor says, I know we're all thinking this, thinking it. Blow it up now. <sighs> I agree. And I'll probably end on this note, guys. It is Monday. It's my birthday today, so I'm going to try and enjoy the rest of the day. But I will end on this note. It is 1,000% in my mind where this thing has to go. Like, they can win some games the rest of the season because they're very talented, but they're never going to win a damn thing that's worth something with Dennis Allen. And that's that's the truth of the matter. And I know that we want them to be better, and I want them to be better too because I think I had this team as like a 10-7 and 7 team, a 10-7 and 7 team. And I don't know if they're going to get there right now, but I'm, I'm very frustrated because that's two years now the Saints wasting a really, really – talented core and that that's two years you can't get back that's two years of alvin you can't get back two years of demario can't get back two years of marshawn Lattimore you can't get back and i don't know i i guess my last thing that i'll close on is like we got 13 more games left let's hope to god that this talent 
can really put something together here and they can overcome inept coaching. But I think at the end of the day, like coaching is what wins you games in the NFL. And we know that. And we're just going to have to try and find different ways and different bright spots to take out of it. But if, and I mean this because I'm being calm right now. If they announce that like Pete's staying for the rest of the season, I will finally blow a gasket. Because at least if they put Curry in and they make a change, you can sell yourself on, all right, they could play maybe complimentary football. And that's all they need to do to actually be a competent team, but they can't do that right now. And that would give us something to look forward to. But when you continue to run the same thing back and forth, it is really, really frustrating. Really frustrating. Comment here from Zeke. I woke up and Pete Carmichael remains employed by the Saints. They ruined. Just kidding. Happy birthday. I appreciate that. I see a lot of the comments you guys left in the chat too. Birthday wishes. Really appreciate it. I really do. Uh, I'll probably do something fun today. I have off on Mondays. So I'm going to rewatch the Saints-Bucks game, which is not fun. And then I'll probably go do some fun stuff. Not sure what. Maybe I'll go see a movie. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here on this Monday. As always, guys, I appreciate you coming in, leaving your thoughts, your comments, your concerns, your questions. I'll be hopping over to Twitter now, going to rewatch Saints Bucks. So I'll give you guys some more commentary on what I saw. And uh, we'll go from there. But, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for your questions. You guys really are the best fan base in the world. There's no question about it. And I can't wait to talk with you guys later this week when we preview Saints Patriots because ain't that going to be a joy. So. Have a great Monday, everyone. We'll be back soon on the Straight Up Saints podcast, the destination for the Houdat Nation.